What you're looking at is the world's first robotic police force. They're made of titanium, fireproof, bulletproof, and gangsterproof. They're very good shots. They don't blink. They don't shake. They hit every shot, and they follow orders without fear or danger. They are always at the forefront of the fight against crime. Even if they die, no one will be sad about it. Robocops have become a revolutionary invention for mankind. They have significantly reduced the crime rate in cities and the death rate of human police officers. The local government was very pleased. The government said that such emotionless crime fighters should be made available nationwide. This man, Adi, is the inventor of Robocop. He had become a wealthy man at a young age, but he had bigger ambitions. His ambition was to create a higher level of artificial intelligence, a robot that is truly self-aware and alive. Adi is obsessed with AI development, to the point of being a bit extreme. He didn't take any breaks after work. He drank Red Bull to refresh himself and frantically wrote programs. After 900 days of hard work, Adi's program is finally up and running. Now all that was left was the final step of testing. He was so excited that he went to the CEO of the company and asked for permission, but the CEO refused on the spot. The CEO thought it would add to our overheads and she was adamant, but Adi wasn't going to give up his hard work so easily. He sneaked into the warehouse and took a robot that was about to be scrapped. He also stole the key to update the robot's program and threw it in the trunk, intending to take it home and test it himself. But as soon as he stepped out of the office, a black car blocked the road. Two men got out of the car. They smashed the glass of the car and put a gun to Adi's head. And then, this is you getting high check my friend welcome to Javel. Adi has been kidnapped by three men. They were already too poor to eat because of Robocop. So they grabbed Adi and forced him to turn off all the Robocops. They thought they could go back to the way things were. But to their surprise, Adi was also helpless. He said, I'm just an employee and I don't have the authority to operate it. I can't turn off the Robocop even if you kill me. The trio went back to search Adi's car and they found a bunch of robot parts in the trunk. Then they had a bold idea. They asked Adi to reprogram the robot to create a powerful robotic bandit to help them rob banks. When Adi heard this, he had a plan in mind. These dumb thieves didn't understand technology, so he might as well take the opportunity to test the artificial intelligence he had developed. So Adi fitted the scrapped robot with an arm, inserted the key to update the program and finally pressed the confirmation button. The robot lights up. The rebooted robot is like a newborn baby, full of fear and curiosity about everything around it. And he is a great learner. Adi brings a toy and says to it, Chicken. The robot took the toy and said chicken after it. Adi loved this cute robot so much that he gave it a name. Chappie. Ian was furious. He grabbed Artie. He wanted a killing robot. But Adi actually built a baby robot. Adi rushed to explain to him that Chappie wasn't just any robot. You can't manipulate him. You can only teach him. He's a self-aware robot. But Ian didn't understand any of this. He just kicked Artie out. Then Ian starts teaching Chappie how to be a street jerk. If you wanna be cool, you have to act cool. Look at Daddy Wolf. Look how cool he is. You need to keep a gangster. You need to keep a gangster. Yeah, be cool. <laughs> You've never seen such a funny robot before. He wears a big gold chain, walks with his head in his hands, and plays with nunchucks. Not only that, but he's a carjacker and gangster. And he's even learned to swear. This robot is called Chappie. He is the world's first self-aware artificial intelligence. He has the mind of a child, can think and learn, and is easily influenced by his surroundings. Unfortunately, Chappie lives in an environment that looks like this. I'm gonna shoot the yellow ones. That's right. The world's most advanced artificial intelligence has turned into a bad boy. He hangs out with a bunch of thugs. He calls Mary his mother, Ian his father, and Jason his brother. They're going to make Chappie the fiercest criminal on the block. And Artie, the inventor of Chappie, would occasionally sneak in to see him. Addie admonished him to be a good, law-abiding AI. Although Artie was worried about Chappie going bad, he didn't dare call the police because a self-aware robot like Chappie was an absolute taboo at the time. And all this was watched by a man in the corner. His name was Mark and he was a colleague of Artie's. He was a weapons engineer. Mark was extremely averse to artificial intelligence. He built a moose robot that had to be controlled in real time by a human wearing a neuroconducting helmet. But because it's so cumbersome to operate, no one likes Mark's invention. The police only approved of Artie's Robocop, so Mark's budget was being squeezed by the company. He was about to lose his job, so he decided to go after Artie. On this day, Mark leads his men to block a stranded Chappie. He knocked him out with an electromagnetic blast. He removes the upgrade key from Chappie's head and is about to destroy it. 
But suddenly Chappie's survival instincts exploded. He breaks free from Mark's grip and jumps out of the car. Mark didn't give chase, because his target wasn't just Chappie. Mark went straight back to the office, inserted the stolen upgrade key into the central processing system and quietly planted a virus in it. On the other hand, Chappie returned home. His hands were removed and he was shivering in the corner. That's when Dad tells him that none of the scientists are any good, including that Artie. Ian said that Artie had given Chappie a faulty body and that Chappie would die when the battery ran out. These words were remembered by Chappie. The real reason was that Artie had no choice but to give Chappie the faulty body he could use. Soon after, the virus implanted on Mark's side took effect. All the Robocops on the mission fell, and that included Chappie. The Robocop was dead. Not enough human cops. The gangs that had been hiding in the shadows got the news and immediately took to the streets to do their dirty work. They unleashed their anger at the robots, which leads to chaos throughout the city. And it was all part of Mark's plan, because this way, the lost robots he invented could be put to good use. On his side, Adi finds the paralyzed Chappie. He rushes to connect to the computer to isolate the virus from the system. Then Chappie wakes up. After his life and death experience, Chappie's desire to live is even stronger. He doesn't want to die. He wants to live. He was interested in what was in the factory, especially the nerve-conducting helmet. It occurred to Chappie that this might be able to extract consciousness. He would transfer his consciousness to his new body, and then he would be able to live. And that's when Adi said it wouldn't work at all. But Chappie no longer believed Adi. He took the helmet and left alone. He comes back and starts researching, and by connecting to the internet he has access to the latest and greatest civilization of all mankind. Then with his artificial intelligence's powerful learning ability. In just one night, Night. He had solved the problem of how to convert consciousness into data. Then Chappie put the helmet on his mother's head and tried to extract the human consciousness. And it worked. Then he put the helmet on his own head and discovered that he could also extract a eye's consciousness. So now the most important thing was to find a new body. That's when Dad told Chappie that new bodies cost money, and that all our money was in the money truck. By now, Chappie had forgotten all about the law. He grabbed his weapon and planned to rob the money truck with his family. This artificially intelligent robot robbed the money truck on the highway. The footage was broadcast live by helicopter. Everyone is shocked. How did Robocop, who was fighting crime just a short time ago, become a gangster accomplice? Mark takes the opportunity to ask the top brass to send in his own robots. Management had no choice. It was the only way to go now. Mark put on his neurotransmitter helmet and pulled the lever. A robot takes to the air and launches a strike at the gang's base. Mark, who is operating the robot remotely, is very much in charge. He's not fighting crime. He's avenging his own personal vendetta in the name of justice. After a frenzy of bombing, Mark finds Adi and prepares to take him down. But just then, Chappie with a bomb in one hand and a machine gun in the other. And a machine gun. He planted the bomb on the robot. Then he fired several shots to slow down his opponent's reaction. Just as Chappie was about to detonate the bomb, the moose robot shot Chappie to the ground and dropped the detonator. In the confusion Addy is shot in the abdomen and collapses. Ian is finally acting like a dad. He tells Chappie to take Mary and go first. He decides to sacrifice himself to distract the robots. Mary doesn't want to leave Ian behind. She picks up her weapon and fires at the robot, only to be shot at in return. Chappie is furious as he stands by. Mary, who took care of him, and Audie, who created him, his two mothers now dying. He picks up the detonator in the gunfire. Chappie drove back to the office with a wounded Addy. He finds Mark and beats him up to save Artie. Chappie tries to transfer his consciousness into the robot's body. And to his surprise, it actually works. My god, the rejuvenated Adi uses the same method to transfer Chappie's consciousness from the low battery to the body of a nearby robot cop. Two robots, one with the consciousness of a human and one with the consciousness of an AI. Together they escape from the human world. The film ends with the two finding Mary and burying her. Chappie remembers the first time he experimented. Chappie remembers that he had stored his mother's consciousness on a USB stick. So he accesses the servers of the arms company to assemble a new machine body and upload the consciousness. Another person, aided by the technology of the AI, is immortalized.